Hello, everyone. Well, Elena, today's selection is Caro no Ben. We're going to explore the differences between singing and speaking and many other details. So let's start by speaking through the text. Caro mio Ben, credimi almen, senza di te languisce il cor. Caro mio Ben, senza di te languisce il cor. Il tuo fedel sospira ognor, cessa crudel tanto rigor, cessa crudel tanto rigor. All right, so we're going to explore a lot of things, but, but one of the things that I think will, will strike uh, Americans is how bright the spoken language is. It's very bright and very vibrant. So that's the first thing you need to notice, right? The other thing in spoken is that the difference between the big E and the little E and, or the open and closed E and the open and closed O are not as great, right? It's more like a, I don't know how you explain it. It's like a feeling, right? It, it, you have to give across the idea of these things, but not exaggerate it to the point where it distorts your voice. Good. Yeah, yeah. If, if we want to consider this, we have to know that um, in Italy, we have different pronunciations. So the real diction is the diction from Tuscany, from Florence. But if you listen to singers and famous singers from the north of Italy, they would pronounce certain words with closed E, for example, and others with open E. And on the contrary, on, in the south, they would do the opposite. So, for example, the word senza that we have here, I read it as it has to be pronounced as diction says, senza, senza, with open E. But I don't say that when I speak, uh, and I don't say that when I sing. <laughs> I say senza. So the difference between open E is se, and close E is se. So you can hear open, senza, and close, senza, senza, senza. But when you sing, you cannot do that because it's no. a e Ah, it's too open, you know, it's yes. not. Hey, well, this, right, you're, you're talking about exaggeration on either end of the spectrum. And also, even when you demonstrate it, it's way more exaggerated just for the point of demonstration yeah, than yeah. you could possibly do when you're singing. So this is one of the things that, you know, people can take away from this is that you, you should not exaggerate, right, yeah. number one. And the other thing is, um, I don't know if we're confusing people more or not, but you know, you 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 have you know you have to maintain the purity of the vowel and the purity of your voice at the same time. So there's a balance between the two, right? And especially in this aria at this beginning, what you can't even sing ah on the first note, really. You have to find a way to sing that within your technique. Because yeah, you could sing yeah. that also, you know, what's called singing wide open, right? But so if you, if you know how it sounds how it really sounds in Italian, you will never say coro. Because yes. it is, okay, it can be quite right as a technique, but it's absolutely wrong as a pronunciation. So you can open up your mouth as you have to do, but be careful, you have to know how it sounds. So it's not coro mio ben, but it's caro mio ben. So it will be a little more... Ah, but this is something that the, the mind does. When you know how it sounds exactly in the spoken language, then you use the technique and your mind leads you exactly where you have to go. And so the idea of the, that you're, you're, you, you know the sound that you want to make and then you, you, you make the sound. Well, so here's the funny thing. Like in jazz, they say there are three phases Right. There is, first of all, um, imitation, then uh, assimilation and then creation. Right. And it's very funny in classical training. 
Uh, that no, I don't want to get too far off track because you, you're giving me lots of ideas as we do this. And there was a lot of other, other things you said that you, I, we need to unpack. But this idea of imitation is one of the things in classical music that kind of went away. People like don't listen to people because you're going to first of all, you're going to get their bad uh, habits. You're going. But it's so important to listen to Italian singers yeah, to know yeah. the sound that you want to make, right? And not everybody will make the sound that you need to make, but by listening to hundreds of different of examples, then you can assimilate and then you can create, right? Uh, that That's the kind of thing that, that we're, we're talking about here. Does that make sense? But when you listen to Italian singers, uh, you will be, um, you will be used to the way they pronounce the arias and probably they will do something wrong sometimes because they don't speak considering diction, but they, uh, sorry, they don't sing considering diction, tout court, uh, they sing uh, considering the way they speak. So they pronounce Italian thinking the way they do when they, uh, they speak. So when I say senza, when I speak, then I say senza when I sing. And I say bene instead of bene. But the yes. funny thing, and this is but a trick. This we have to mention that you live in, you live in Milan. Yeah. Right? You're yeah. in Milan or you're up north. And yeah. this type of thing is very frequent in the speech there. Yeah. But the funny thing is that, uh, at least we as Italians, when we have to pronounce a vowel and we are not so sure that it is correct, we can just make yeah, it. Giusta, right? Yeah. Aggiustare. Yeah. We use <laughs> in order not to show uh, exactly how it sounds. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But then, but then there are, I mean, there are certain words where the meaning changes, right? I mean, I've actually done a list of the dangerous, I've done a list for, for a lot of my clients of the dangerous words that you don't want to say one way or another, you yeah. know? Uh, but there's more. There, there was more that you talked about before. So you were talking about the Tuscan, uh, the Tuscan dialect for the grammar was what became the national yeah, language yeah. of Italy. But there is yet yeah, there is still a very heavy Tuscan accent, and you don't want to sing with that heavy Tuscan accent, right? Now the other thing is that there was such a thing as La Scala Italian, right? I remember talking to um, a very fine Italian coach in New York about this, right? So, and you'll even see this instance in the the, um, the Nico Castell books that have all of the things in, in the pronunciation. Um, they'll do things sort of like a te, he'll open it, right? They'll, they'll do siete as closed. They'll do, uh, you know, they'll do things like that. And at La Scala, right, yeah, you're, yeah. you're doing the, these things with the Milanese accent. Now, I can find you recordings from the 1950s of even Santa Cecilia where they're using this Italian. Yeah, yeah. Right? So this was a thing that was sort of, you know, way it was way it was sung across Italy, right? Now, um, the other thing is, what we call dialects in English in Italy, because of the different duchies in Italy, in Italy, there are actually not only is there a different pronunciation, vastly different from region to region in Italy, there are actually different languages. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So Sicilian is a different language from Italian. Neapolitan. Right. Calabrese. Right. So all of these things, the Venetians, everybody had what well, yeah. were different countries and there are vastly different pronunciations from region to region. Yes. yes. And this is a fact. So we, actually, we, we shouldn't confuse uh, the students or those who want to understand how to sing, I think. But we, we can use uh, the diction, but we have to be aware that uh, if you really love some uh, native speaker singer and you're really uh, listening to them, then you just have to know where they are from and to understand how they pronounce uh, the arias, actually. Uh, learn that sometimes the same word can be pronounced with open E, close E, open O, 
close all oh, because even for, for for example people from naples they say fuoco fuoco to say fire while we say fuoco but if you ask somebody from naples to say fuoco they don't say fuoco they say fuoco because they are not used to so this happens also to italians if they want to change their pronunciation so if you really like certain native speakers uh, native singers uh, and you really uh, always listen to them then you can just sing the way they do the important thing is that you have to know how those very vowels sound and we just have i mean we have two e's two o's we don't have others this is the only fact just learn the few vowels we have and you can i mean uh, practice and decide how you want to pronounce them according to what you hear from natives i think this is correct what do you think yeah yes um well there there's a lot there right um so you you're reminding me of stuff so it's very funny because in, in in american english we have the same thing where you're where people can't say words a certain way because it's just not natural for them and it almost sounds affected to say it a certain way when you were born a certain way saying it a certain way right um the other thing i'm reminded of is that it is not enough to be a native English speaker to sing English. You have to work very hard at changing the rhythm yes, of yes. the English Same in thing. order for it to be distributed properly. And one of the things I used to play in New York, I used to play for voice lessons, and I played for some very, very famous former Italian divas who lived in New York. And one of the things that struck me was how hard they had to work, even though they were Italian, yes, yes. to make the language beautiful. Yes. Right? Because so, you know that many Italians, they sing so, they sing good, but you understand nothing of what they say. And this is not good. I mean, this is just uh, a middle way between being bad and good. <laughs> they have to be, they have, the audience has to understand what they say. This is what, what it is, what I have learned from. Yeah, it's, it's diligence. It's more of diligence and, and really, really, really paying attention to everything that you do. And it's also that one of the other things is that most people neglect the idea that to be a singer, you have to have incredible rhythm. You have to have rhythm like a drummer because yeah, yeah. to make these distributions of the language, you have to have the split second timing. You, you agree with this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now, while I have you, here's here's another thing. There's a big controversy of the unstressed vowels. So the stressed vowels in Italian, you basically have to memorize. Whether if it's an e or it's an o, you have to memorize, right? And you can you can tell me if you agree or you disagree. Where we agree and we disagree. So a stressed vowel is either open or closed, but the unstressed, here's where the controversy, some books open them all and other books have them all closed. Yes. So Colorni opened them all. And the reason was there was a, it, so they, they were, if you look at books written around the turn of the century, right? The end of the Belle Epoque, right? And into the beginning of the, the 20th century, you'll see books where people started, where Italian voice teachers started to, export their knowledge they used to go they went to america they went to different places and you see people writing about it when we they, they were talking about you know here in caruso and he tended to open his endings for singing isn't that funny right yeah quite fun yeah. but you believe see i could tell by your reaction right you believe that their unstressed vowels are absolutely closed yes why no i really don't know no, I don't know why do they all have to be closed. Why that? I mean, they have their pronunciation, so. Right. It doesn't matter if we are singing or not. You have to pronounce them properly. Yes, yes, but um, what my, my question is, right, unstressed vowels, are they open or are they closed? Are, some, some books say that they're, they're absolutely, you know, you open them for singing or are they closed for singing? That's the question. But the thing is that 
what do you mean with closed in this case? Because well, they're, they're, a, they're, they're a versus a, right? Okay. They're o versus all. And what do you mean you close your voice? Why do yes. they have to close or open all the unstressed vowels? Is there any reason for that? I, it's inertia. I, I've had more success in my coachings um, because here, here's the thing. We have the Castell books that open them all, right? Mm -hmm. I listen to people speaking. I hear them all closed when you're speaking. They're absolutely closed because of inertia, right? Right. So a word like penetrare, right? The accents on the ah, you absolutely go a, 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 a. You don't go pa, you know, right? Okay, because it's right. not. Yeah, because this right, is because of the inertia. Now, for singing, it's vocal depth. Now, I think what happened, it came out of a good intention because there's a tendency to go eh, and yeah. make it all in your head resonance. Right? Yeah. So, the reason for opening them at the beginning was just to go, like, hey, Joe, you're going to do them with the stretch of shouting. Mm -hmm. But then it got written down. And then it got exaggerated. You see what I mean? And this is what I was talking about, about one dimensionality. You start off with an idea that's good, and then it becomes uh, exaggerated. Yes. And the, the, then yeah, it becomes or heavy or bad. Does that make sense? But here we are again, same thing. Because uh, the idea of opening is good for the mouth, the palate. Yes. The palate. But it's not good for the pronunciation. I um, what I was saying uh, about the mind is very important because it's just a matter of a little movement that helps uh, the singer pronounce the the vowel properly. It's not closing the soft palate or uh, or making this sound in the nose. It's not that. It's just that you learn the technique. And then you learn how to pronounce properly by using your mind because you know how it has to sound. And then you try to pronounce it open or closed uh, if it has to be open or closed. You don't have to do them all open or all closed. It's just a matter of being good as a technique and then um, managing to think right. I, maybe it seems so so crazy, but it's not. It's very easy. No, no. It's on, your, on your breath. And you again, can, I'm, I'm reminded. Oh no, keep going, keep going. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. I'm not here to 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 teach technique. Absolutely. But I think that if you are on your breath, if your your um, vocal uh, vocal tract is open and well, uh, you have a good resonance. If this thing are the things are there, then you just have to thank the language and it, and it goes. You don't have to close anything in order to pronounce a language properly. But you have to know, it's like, okay, I have an example. It's like uh, completely different, but it may, may, maybe it works. If you have to play an instrument like bass and sing, you have to think different things, completely different. And what do you have to do? Like playing piano, you have to uh, really train both things separately. So you just play bass all the time and you are very good at it. Then you sing all the time, you're very good at it. You know what you have to do and that very song, that very uh, uh, symphonia, I don't know, anything. And then you put them together. The same thing for me is the technique and the language. You should do them separately at first and then you put them together. So it's nat it's natural, it's spontaneous, and you don't you don't change the the language. You don't have to speak Italian fluently and be Italian. You just have to practice. That's it, I think. To to, to yeah. Well, here. Well, again, um, your actual your last what you're describing at the end for me is not thinking. Actually, you think at the beginning. You yeah. think you think to do the right motion. You think, you slow down, you repeat it, right? Here's the thing is, um, I forgot who said this, but somebody said to be excellent at something, like whatever it is, like a tennis stroke or um, you know something athletic. And, and being a singer or being a musician is a lot like being an athlete. So you find the right motion 
and then you repeat it 10,000 times the right way, and then the thoughts go away. But you're thinking at the beginning, but then the thoughts go away and it becomes your nature, right? In the same way that a mistake becomes your nature. Does that make sense? Yeah, probably it's not the mind itself that makes you pronounce properly, but the ear or what, what you have already learned probably. Or the, neur the neurons, right? You, you create neurons, yeah. you create the pathways by, by going through. It just yeah. goes right when you know how to do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. All right, so now let's, let's break down a few more things um, in this. Um, Let's talk about Roldar versus uh, Flipdar. If you say the first, just say the first line of the of the of the song. Okay. Caro mio ben. So caro, first R. Now do the second line. Credimi al men. So credimi hmm? is a Roldar. First one, caro. Okay. Right. So for me. The phenomenon exists because the R is surrounded by vowels. Yeah, yeah. If the R touches a consonant, usually it will roll in Italian. Right? And this is what this is what you did naturally as you as you said it. Yeah. Well right? it depends. If you have doubles, for example, it can be also changes. If it but it's touching a consonant. It's still touching a consonant. This is the syllogism, right? The syllogism is R that touches a consonant is rolling, right? Except for how about final R? Final R, if you just end the sentence. If you said the, the, the last line of the first stanza. Cor, languisce il cor. Cor, right? Mm. So final R not touching anything, it's rolling. Yeah. Right? Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of confusion on this. Yeah, let me hear. You wouldn't Come. believe what I hear in the United States about about these things. Mm -hmm. And see, the thing is, is, you follow exactly what I've heard. I've heard very careful Italian singers do. Right. No. Here's the other here's the other phenomenon that I hear people do wrong all the time is the doubling of consonants that aren't doubled. Right. So M's. Ends and ends mm -hmm. get the get the worst of it, right? So, for instance, if you sing, if you say the second line again, credimi al men. So the me, because it's surrounded by vowels, single m, right? So I could make the mistake as a non-Italian. I would say credimi. Oh, See, okay. you hear this all the time. Oh, really? Right? really? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So people want to do all of one thing. They either want to double everything or they want to make everything singular. Mm -hmm. It's hard for somebody who's not Italian to do the mix that you guys do just naturally. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. But the, the, thing, the thing is that we uh, perfectly know how a double sounds uh, when we read it. So I, any, any Italian could ask, why do you do that? I mean, there's just one M written. So do you, can, do you have an answer for that? Oh. <laughs> why, do you, why do you say credit me if there is just one M? Because that's we do. This is what we do in English. So in English, when we get expressive, we, we go on the consonant, right? If you get expressive in Italian, you go, you, the, t, it's, you go down the vowel. You guys go like, you do the opposite. And I think a lot of other languages go to consonants. But Italian is the opposite. So people are looking for a certain rule, but then sometimes they look for the wrong thing. And it's because of, there is a, sometimes there is a definite formula of, it's because this follows this. Does that make sense? Yes. So the M is surrounded by vowels, and you guys just do that. That's what you do, right? And it's your nature, right? But it's our nature to double it. But it's I, our exactly opposite nature. It's actually it's our exact opposite nature to make something open that's closed. 
And if we have a double consonant, we have a hard time not doing an open vowel. You see what I mean? Like words like, like, you know, like the diminutive in Italian, like musetta. We want to say musetta so badly. This is our nature. Isn't that, you, you think it's funny? <laughs> No, people from Milan is going to be happy. <laughs> Musetta. <laughs> it's very from Milan. <laughs> yeah. 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 Some Italians would say so too, but just yes. But but technically the correct one is closed. The the diminutive is usually closed in Italian. Somebody who's really good as a musician and is very elegant could do something like that that's not right technically and it still sounds good. Yeah, and I think that's that's the thing that we we agree on, right? So that you know somebody who's elegant can do it, can can do sort of those things. Yes. 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 The the, the most important thing is that you hear what you do, <laughs> and, and try and be elegant. That's absolutely the point. But some, uh, for example, well, let's talk about another area just for a second that makes it, it's easier. O mio babbino caro. For example, I don't like this double M. Oh, mio, mio. Why that double M? But this is just personal, you know. I don't find it elegant. Double M, when you say, oh, mio, babbino, is, sounds bad to me. But, but what it's if, just opinion. if, I'll be devil's advocate. What if you sang the beginning, right, and you don't, you just did the slightest, you did, Oh mio babino, instead of oh, mm, where you're like clamping down, you see. Again, um, the word o oh technically is a strong monosyllable, right? So it's a strong monosyllable that does cause a phrasal doubling, right? But if, again, you're taking a good thing and you have an example of it just being too much, it's there. But it's yet, see, I believe, which is what I believe that you would ha, would read that if you were doing it on a very innocent way and you didn't think about it, you would double that M, but you would do it so slightly and so elegantly that you wouldn't even know that you were doing it. But if I wrote it, I see what happens is I do my text where I write things like that in. Now it's written down. And the danger is when I write that, is that it becomes huge. It yeah, looks yeah. like gigantic, right? Looks like the Duomo of, of Firenze, right? No, all my, it's not my intention, right? My intention is to, to find that one. It's dangerous, right? You're putting yourself out there as an artist to do those things. But how far do you take it before you're doing it and it's too much, where you've crossed the line? I think that somebody that has to learn the doubles doesn't matter if at the beginning and not written or written doubles, they should find uh, out find out the rhythm. They should know the rhythm of the sentence. That way, they would understand that it's just a slight M or a very strong R. For example, we were talking about the R before. If you have to say carro. Carro, which is, uh, what is a carro? It's like a boxcar on a train. Uh, yeah, with wheels. Uh, yes. <laughs> like boxcar on a train, right? Yeah. Yes. Or right. a cart, right? It's a cart with wheels that carries exactly. things. Carro, carro. It's not yeah. caro. It's completely yes. another word means something different. And you have to know the rhythm of the word carro, carro. If you know that, you're saying Caro, the box with wheels. If you're saying caro, you're saying dear. So yes. it's very important to listen to how long it lasts. And same thing, we never have doubles at the beginning of the words. So if you hear doubles at the beginning of the words, these are only for interpretation, for for fluency of the of the uh, sentence, and and uh, so so that the words are not too far one from the other, you know. And in this case, it has to be sweet and very fast. And this is something that a student could focus on and, and listen if this mio is very long or not. 
and just listen to the rhythm of the sentence. That's the thing that makes them clear how I, I think that makes makes it easier. Hmm? I, li I like this very much. And I mean, it's the whole reason why I, I contacted you in the first place, because I love to this is like for me, I, I, I love to discuss the, the, the finer points and all the nuance in the language is very nerdy of me. But it's great to have somebody who is, you know, has this sort of knowledge and is willing to go into these details with, with me. Now, I just want to tell our listeners that both of us have a very detailed uh, pronunciation video on this aria, right, that you can go to. So mine is kind of like really slow in how you can move your mouth. If you're absolutely having a problem, I go through every single word. Yours, you have this great way of you talk about the nuances and you go through a line by line and you can repeat after me. So we'll link to the, to our videos in, uh, I guess both the description and with little cards. So, so people can go to them. So, um, yes. so okay. I want to talk about the word, the, the, uh, languishe. Okay. Yes. Talk about that. Yes. Okay. Cause there are several things that happen in that that are not phonetic. So if you say the word, Okay, the word is languishe. So notice that the, the sh sound in this is technically a double consonant. And if you say it again, just don't even think about it, just say it. Are you sure? Are you sure? That yes, I am, I am sure. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. Languishe. See the sh. Is it double? Yes. Okay. Language. The reason why is because everybody else in the world, I'll say it, I'll say it with an accent. Ready? Okay. Languishe. Okay, it's quite, this is not accent. No, it's wrong. Wow. It's wrong. Why? Languishe. No, you said, now you did it long. Okay. You said languishe. She. Right? The whole world says, the whole world says ischia. You guys say ischia. E. Ischia. If I did it slow motion, I mean, I'm distorting it now. You guys say e skia. And when you say it fast, you go e skia. Okay. E -skia. We say e skia. Okay, double S. Wrong, though. Wrong in the wrong way. Double S in the wrong way. Your double S separates the phonation. Mm -hmm. Our double S hisses across the syllables. So if you looked at a like say you looked at two like a can like two mountains, and the can the both syllables are two mountains. Yeah. Our S goes across the canyon. Your S starts on the second mountain. Yes, sure, because they are separate, absolutely. And we see it. This you know? is the distinction. This is this distinction I always had to make because people will sing. They'll sing la sha, right? Instead of la sha. Right? They'll always go la sha, and because of the singing is so slow. Some Italians do that too. So maybe I don't. May, I see. Here's the thing. Maybe I'm not correctly defining it as a double consonant, but I we need to define it as something to be able to make that distinction, right? Does that make sense? Yes. Now, now that we've talked about it. So they, so they have to know that lush, uh, language is wrong. Language, language is yeah, right. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. But, so, but they, they have to practice that. Lang, lang, we, we, she. Absolutely. Absolutely. Lang, we, she. Lang, one of one of the best voice teachers in, in New York City used to have all of her students do that. They'd be in their dressing room going, ka, ro, mio, be, every syllable. Yes, yes, yes. are so important. And this is what we're talking about before, about, you know, you have the right thought and you, you practice the right way and then it becomes your nature. Yes, yes. So why did you say that it is a, a, a double, this sh? You started because saying... Because of the way, the way you distribute 
the way you distribute the um, the phonation, you separate it. Yes, but we do separate the doubles in the when we divide the syllables of the word. So if we have chessa, for example, it's chess sa. This when you speak, yes. But could you sing that? To speak. Ah, okay. No, right? See, that that's the thing, right? That's the thing is when I will get, I will, I will think, I will get somebody to think about every single thing and talk about it. Like, can you do this when you sing, right? No, you can't. You couldn't sing chess through that, right? Chess through that. You absolutely, yes, have yeah, to. Yeah change right now there are a lot of things in speech that you can say but then you can't sing it okay right? sure. me, me, me like a very even an italian me me will sing wrong grazie buonasera right oh no that's a brutta figura right yeah, but you can speak yeah. and say grazie you can speak and say it but grazie yeah, yes. that's made me of, a, of, another, of another problem. This is also because certain vowels in certain notes, in certain situ melodic situations are pretty difficult. And so the singer goes straight to the, or they, they uh, for example, um, I make you an example. Oh Lord, want you by my Mercedes Benz? I've been taught that I shouldn't say Oh Lord because it sounds yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. It's the same thing, or maybe even Bon Jovi. He used to say Always because probably probably Always was to e the e was too hard to be to be uh, pronounced properly at at that point of the melody. It was too difficult. I, I mean, these things happen always when we when we sing. It doesn't matter if it is classical or not. We have certain vowels that are really hard to sing, and so we just mm, ask for help. Uh, doesn't matter if we have a consonant or another vowel which is easier mm, close, and we change the the pronunciation because of the technique of the difficult. You're absolutely right with that, though. That's exactly right. It, I mean, it, that, it is something dynamic. It is something that you have to redistribute, right? So, you know, um, people will sing, you raise me up, and, and put all the, you know, it's so close, even in English, right? And you have to go, uh, you raise me up. And you have to actually say, you can't sing up. You have to actually sing ah ah up. Make people believe that it's up, right? And, and my voice is horrible, but you know, you get the idea, right? That you can't. The ah brings it down, and everything is in the wrong time. You have to distort the time again, which is funny because you remind me of the criticism that I get from Italians in my videos, right? That, like, you know, I get, like, the, the Germans called the Zeigerfinger. You're not Italian, and it's troppo calculata, right? Well, of course it is, because I'm doing it in the time of the, of the aria, right? And I'm making it clear that this is exaggerated. I'm yeah. going to, you know, because... Poor, poor people coming across, there are these, you know, kids doing these arias for the first time. And they're just, you know, they're, they're coming on to our channels just for some little guidance on how to negotiate these things and, and wrap their voices around it. We just have, we as singers, I mean, we are all singers. We all have to learn new melodies when we, during our lives. And... Uh, I think that we always find those difficulties. Certain vowels are really hard to be done, but we can do them. They are there and they are there to be done. And if they are there, it means that we can do them. Doesn't mean that we are aliens if we do them. People who can sing good, they are not aliens or we don't know. They are, of course, probably geniuses or very good singers, but they have done their work. And they, I mean, we just have to be calm and and try and try and do it right. And uh, not focusing on the wrong way. 
and on the wrong pronunciation, but trying to do it with the right pronunciation. At that point, while breathing with technique, with the help of a teacher, of a coach, they can do it. It's not difficult, but sometimes it's the fear that makes us move to another consonant or vowels instead of staying there and just keep calm and don't have panic when you know that that very note is going to arrive with that very vowel. I mean, it's very important to work on that when you are somebody who has to, to learn or and when you have to learn. I mean, I, I don't know if you agree, but it's very important to focus on how it has to be done right and go on. Right. That, is, that is all very, very well put because there's a certain amount of very, very um, strong people become singers, right? And, and, and I don't mean that you, you can't... You, you have to find that inner, uh, the inner will. It's your will. And everybody has that will. You just find that will where you don't, you don't yield and you don't compromise, right? And it's the idea of that having that tremendous rhythm. And rhythm can be learned, right? People just practice. Yeah. And, and, and then, you know, you pra again, you practice, you slow down, you practice the right way. And for me, it's never, never was, you know, talent gets you a certain amount, but then diligence after that. So if you feel you've benefited from our work and we've saved you some money, why not head on to Patreon or subscribe star and support our work. We'll have links to both of our channels um, and in, in the description and also in the cards. Um, there you can donate as little as a couple dollars a month and your support is very appreciated. It helps us in the creation of new videos. And um, also you may help by subscribing and sharing and liking the videos. Sharing especially helps YouTube recognize that this channel is relevant, right? And don't forget to see your coach because nothing takes the place of a live coach, right? And after you watch our other videos on this language, you can go show off your Italian to your coach or your teacher. And they would, I know they would love to spend more time on music than on pronunciation, right? And we, we also have, um, you can ask us, to, to talk about other things that you're confused on, right? Because this is the first of many videos between right, the two right. of us, right? So so great. So thank you, everybody, for watching. Elena, thank you for thank taking you. the time today. Thank you. All right. So ciao, everybody. We'll see you in the next video. Ciao. Bye. Bye.